Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around. Won't see it now. Not like crossing oceans. We are Rebecca Childress from the USA and Michael Hayward from South Africa on board my 1976 Valiant 40 brick house. 6.5! After losing my husband Patrick Childress to COVID-19 almost two years ago, I decided to continue my circumnavigation and left with Michael in 2021 to keep sailing and cruising. This is our journey. <laughs> In this episode, we cruise more of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the good and the bad. This is considered one of the top ten places in the world to go sailing. There's Brick House in the middle there. We're hiking the waterfalls, going to the beaches, enjoying lots of sundowners, fishing as we go from island to island. Lovely. Right in the kisser. And just having an all around good time sailing the Southern Caribbean, having ice cold coffees. While Michael has a cold beer. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. So here we are in beautiful Bequi, uh, looking down at the harbor. You can see the ferries coming in, uh, this one coming from St. Vincent, about an hour ferry ride away. Uh, the harbor is beautiful, the color of the water is beautiful, restaurants line the shore and you can go all to all kinds of dinners and activities. It seems like something's happening every night of the week. Walking along, uh, there's a yacht club as well, uh, they call it the Beckwee Marina, and you can walk right to it, park your dinghy there. And dinghy riding is pretty easy, but it can be a little bit wet, so sometimes I stand up in the dinghy. <laughs> uh, this is one of the restaurants along the shore. We're gonna tie up at a dock here and have some lunch and maybe a cocktail. Up in the tree is some parrots. Some The St. Vincent parrot is up there somewhere. I didn't really get a good look at it. We couldn't get a camera on it, but the kids saw it. You can certainly, certainly hear it. There's a lovely walkway that you can walk all the way around the whole day on sidewalks and trails. Uh, this morning we're getting ready to go onto the St. Vincent Ferry and uh, go check out St. Vincent. We haven't been there before, so we're going to go to the main town. We forgot Michael's shoes. We had to find bread. We didn't have any money, and we were hungry. But at least all the stray dogs are getting some breakfast now. Good stuff. And um, even some I of the, the not-so-stray so right? dogs. Have you seen them? Oh, oh, isn't that a good trick? I bought a one-way fare for each one of us. We don't want to be married to coming back on this one, although we would have saved a little bit of money coming back on the same one. It's a great ride over. Um, the precision of these ferries as they come in and out between each other into the harbors, both in Beckley and in St. Vincent proper. It's amazing how they this is the space that he's going into, arriving into St. Vincent. The ferries run about five or six times a day, at least, and are $20 or less round trip per person. We had a good time looking at all the street art as we walked around the streets of St. Vincent. It's all up and down the St. Vincent Cross. 
Kingstown, the capital of St. Vincent, is just a really nice place to walk through. It has a lot of cool architecture, a little bit of a cross between French and English and maybe a few other cultures. Um, and it has a whole lot of nice people too, so it's, it's a very pleasant town. There we go, should be up there. There's a few rooftop bars and rooftop restaurants, and we managed to find one of them in the first visit, overlooking the main street of Kingstown, St. Vincent. Perfect. As many of you know from the last video, we got to visit the Central Police Station many times before we left this island. We both bought new shoes in Kingstown, and we did a heck of a lot of walking that day, so it's a good thing we did. Churches and schools, restaurants, stores. I think we easily walked 10 miles that day, just seeing so much. We finally found our way to the Botanical Gardens, and that was a lot more peaceful, a little respite in the middle of the city. Didn't they tell you you're not allowed to pick the wildlife? I didn't pick it, I just picked it up. Oh, I see, yeah. Don't forget to stop and smell the flowers. There we go. Oh, it smells good. You must definitely take time to smell the flowers. We at least temporarily learned all the names of the flowers and the trees in the park. We also got to see the St. Vincent parrot, but it was behind these terrible bars, which was horrible to see for both him and us. It's beautiful to see them, but it's too bad that they can't put them in an aviary or something more open so they can feel more free and we can see them better. I think a lot of things live in here. Snakes and rats and cockroaches and termites. Joy, this is for you. We pick it, but we're in a botanical garden and it's against the law to pick anything. What on earth is it? It's a mushroom. This is where the beautiful St. Vincent parrot needs to live. Back in town again, before getting on the ferry to return to Beckley, we go to the fish market. Oh, there's a lovely mahi-mahi that they're putting on ice. I always hate catching these fish because as you are watching it, you can often see the mate following their beloved all the way to the boat. They mate for life, and now the lucky one is left behind. I think these are a species of tuna. I'm happy to catch these anytime. I'm happy to buy them too, which we did for a tasty dinner that night. And in the fish market, they are chopping up the fish and selling them by the kilo with lots of customers. They're cash on the ready. Before we know it, we're back on the ferry and back into Beckley. You know, because St. Vincent has that reputation for being dangerous. I had a feeling I'd find you here. Mm. Taking the ferry over from safe little Beckwe is a pretty good option for a lot of cruisers, but it kind of left us wanting to see more. Always lots of handicrafts to buy in Beckwe at tourist prices. But very nice too. A lot of things made out of wood, out of coral, even out of tortoise shell. Beckwe really is a pleasant little tourist town with lots of places to explore and roadside stalls and arts and crafts. Tons of different kinds of handicrafts as well, lots of little makeshift stalls along the road, selling everything from food to jewelry to decorations for the house. There's always something to pick up in Beckwe. Nothing like a cold drink, whether it be alcohol or just straight coffee. Um, there's nothing like that after a long day in the city and a ferry ride back to calm and peaceful Beckley. So many boats like us decide that just a couple of day trips on a ferry to St. Vincent's not enough and they sail off and go to the west side of St. Vincent anywhere from Blue Lagoon on the south side all the way up the north side to the volcano. There's a lot to see, a lot of nice little fishing villages. Of course, we went with the buddy boat. We did have a problem right here in this bay, which was covered in the video from last month. So if you want to see the best and the worst of this bay, 
Many of the bays on the west coast of St. Vincent are like this. You tie a stern line to your stern and you put on an anchor out front and uh, that keeps your bow into the swell and you're very, very close to shore so you just need to paddle your dinghy ashore. You don't even need to put your motor on and leave that locked up on the big boat. Um, these bays do have reputations for being uh, a little bit dangerous. It was safe while we were there, uh, but we did have that problem in the Southern Bay, in Buckament Bay. Right up top there. Met some interesting people. So you were born here, this is your home. You are so blessed to live here, huh? isn't it beautiful? That that's called the slow mojito trot, that's or the rum called. punch gallop. That's what it's called, the run, run punch gallop, exactly <laughs> what it's called. So that's interesting, I'm glad we're here. Oh, what's sparkling over there? Yes, in St. Vincent in Kingstown. I did get my nose eh? pierced, been thinking about it for a long time. <laughs> Something I just had to do, I don't know. They say let your hair down, let your mother down, so mom, this one's for you. <laughs> so, okay. down my hair goes. Almost. Maybe oh, my hair is too big for snarl to let my hair down. There, my there hair is down. I always loved uh, how the women had uh, very, very, very small diamond studs in their noses, and I finally decided to do it. It's also said to be an act of rebellion. I'm surprised you actually got down there. That's Did where we came in. Does the bus? The bus lets you off right here, but then you walk down the road and you go put us on the beach there. Okay. So yes, we had taken a bus from another anchorage just south of here and checked out these bays to see if it was worth coming and doing this complicated pilot. This is my grandmother. Decided that it definitely would be worth it. Uh, this is my grandfather. I'd recognize him anywhere. Tef the Terrible. Yeah. yeah. And then this one's, um, I think this one's my auntie. A swimming tortoise, previously known as a turtle. What? 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 You said a big tortoise show. Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed here many years ago, and these are some of the remnants. And as you can see, many cruisers leave their flags behind. This is kind of an epic place. One day we walked to a waterfall. It wasn't a big waterfall, but it was a lot of water, great back massage, and the water was very cold and very refreshing. I uh, can't see much underneath the water there, but there are some fish that live in there. And um, yeah, it's just a nice place to hang out for an afternoon, they have a place to eat, uh, eat lunch, and lots of little nooks and crannies to explore. I think Michael spent most of his time sitting behind the waterfall taking a video. I was in the water a lot, and Michael was getting back rubs and baths in the, sh the strongest part of the falls. He does like his creative shots, doesn't he? I guess they don't call him an artist for nothing. It's always so amazing to me how the waterfalls, water just keeps coming and coming and coming. Just mesmerizing. You know, to a cruiser, a waterfall is not just a pretty face. It's not just a fun outing, but it's an actual real live bathtub. We don't bring our soap, we don't wash our hair or our bodies, but being in the water for so long with our dirty clothes, um, often provides a better shower and a better washing machine than just about any shower we can find on shore or on the boat. And the water is unlimited and we take great joy in it. It was fun exploring along the coastline, looking at all the little caves and the little beaches and uh, seeing what the tourists don't get to see, because there are no roads here, there are no hotels. That beach is really We decided 
the next day that we should take off on a tour with a taxi driver and see what he could show us. So they take their boats right there and then they have to climb all the way up there to cultivate all for marijuana. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Now, there was just a volcanic eruption here less than a year ago. It covered the entire island as well as surrounding islands with thick, thick ash. Devastated the islanders and the visiting sailboats here. The morning after the volcano erupted. Oh my God, look at it. Of course, things that go up come back down. What's going out here? All over the floor. So anything you touch, it's everywhere. It's making my eyes burn. You get the taste of the ash in your mouth. It's everywhere. I'm sure it's not good to breathe it, but what are you going to do? To flush the toilet, you have to bathe and you have to cook and you have to wash. As I tell you, the river does not have any clean water. Very good friends with Vincentians that are months later still not back in their homes. What we experienced with the volcano is almost nothing. So we really couldn't feel too badly for ourselves when a year later we got to Darkview Falls and couldn't hike the trail up to the volcano. Both cruisers before us and the people of the island had it so much worse. Luckily our tour guide knew how to at least sneak us into the start of the trail, but the part past the waterfall was very strictly prohibited. Darn. But we feel lucky to have at least seen these gorgeous and refreshing cold waterfalls. Maybe next time the trail to the volcano will be open. And if the truth be told, maybe I will be in better shape to go. There is that volcano that we missed in the background there. We're yep. motoring past it in glassy, glassy waters. Michael woke me up very early this morning. Although I did tell him, oh, dark 30, so I guess it was to be expected. But at 5.30 this morning, before the sun came up, we were untying lines. And now we are out. I haven't even brushed my hair or brushed my teeth yet and I'm still drinking my coffee and we've been underway for 20 minutes now. Terrible way to wake up, but I guess I'd rather wake up and go sailing, or motoring in this case, than to wake up and go to work. <laughs> Sorry. As it often is on the west side of these islands, there wasn't a lot of wind as we went up the west coast but this boat will not be feeding us for too much longer. So we're leaving St. Vincent. We're just, we just cleared the north tip. We motored from the anchorage up to the tip. We had to charge the batteries and the batteries got to 100% and the wind came out almost at the same time. So we're on our way to St. Lucia where we're gonna stop for just a night. Anchor under quarantine with our yellow flag up. Um, so that we don't have to sail at night and then the next morning, tomorrow morning, we'll continue on to Martinique. Boy, sailing here in the Caribbean's awesome. It's like you get to stop every night and put down your anchor. Not like crossing oceans. Much nope. more fun. And we got a fair bit of wind, so I don't think we should chat too long. We've got about what? Well, it's only 20, but we got a lot of sail up and she's healing over a bit, so we just got to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Oh, we're going almost seven knots. Yay. Okay, wait, Stories of joy and of sorrow. I'm dying to That's with a dirty bottom. We have a partially reefed headsail and a full main up. Probably time to drop the main a little bit though. Heck, we're going so nice and fast, I hate to do that. So maybe we'll just keep going. It would be good to get to St. Lucia in the day. We're trying to go to the very top of St. Lucia into Rodney Bay. So we've got about 40 miles more to go. 40 more miles and we'll be there. That's nothing. So hard to tell, but we're together.
about 21, 22 knots of wind. And we're going along nicely at about five or six knots. Pointing pretty well, pointing pretty high. On our way to Martinique, Marin Martinique from St. Lucia. And uh, the reason we took in the um, reefs was we have, it doesn't look so bad right now, but about a half hour ago, off to our right, there's a cloud formation and a bunch of swirly things in it. So, haven't seen that before, would rather not. For a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back Take my time, just enjoy the ride I don't want to find out what it is under full sail, thank you very much So yeah, we're going a little slower than we were We're coming off at 7 and 7 and a half with all our sails up But uh, I just don't want to push my luck I'd like to finish the circumnavigation without ripping my sails in the last 500 or 700 pounds. Well, you can have the helm back now if you want. I know how much you love it. It's starting to rain. What a bitch. Get I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day because I found my way. I found my way. St. Anne, just over there with the about 500 masts. Cause I found my way